Welcome to Sojourners Awake. This is Jonathan, and this is the final segment for Escape from Skull Island. I hope you really enjoyed watching this swashbuckling comedy adventure in which the heroes always win and fun antics are always had. There are plenty of opportunities uh, where I wanted to break down exactly what I did as a dungeon master and how I uh, used the dice rolls to interpret the story. There's more of that at www.sojournersawake.com if you're ever interested in reading some articles or gaining some insight. If you liked the background music, you can visit www.tabletopaudio.com for more wonderful background music and ambiance for your tabletop role-playing games. And let's face it, sometimes I just play it in the background during the day to make me feel like an epic hero while I'm washing dishes or sweeping the floor. May your story continue. Smarter, not harder. <laughs> and the door, the door closes behind you. Vladimir and Ellie, you're in this room. Um, with enough time, <laughs> a, a, call, calling him a, 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 a coward, he, he opened the door the wrong way. And so he kind of shook for a minute, had to reset, tried to open the door, but he should have pushed instead of pulled. And it's jammed shut. And so he pulls it even harder, thinking that it's jammed. And then he just presses his back up against the wall, this fire newt. And he looks at you, Caspian, and sees the three of you now, Vladimir walking ever so confidently, and then that little raccoon um, retrieving the spear, of course. Pardon? Coming in behind, <laughs> underneath your legs, Caspian, holding it with his opposable thumbs, foaming at the mouth, like the rabid city creature that it is. <laughs> the fire newt says back to you in primordial, broken primordial, mind you. Why have you come? Uh, I'm going to try to respond and say um, I'm looking for a key and you can lead me to it. Uh, he seems to cock his head inside, not understanding what the word key means, but sensing that you are wanting him to be led. Um, he looks to you, Vladimir. He looks to you, Ellie, and then looks back to Caspian and says, you want what is a key? I need the power to control a ship. You are pirates. Not yet. He looks a little disappointed, that lack of confidence you have in yourself. <laughs> he starts to look towards the door and makes a break for it. Wrong move. I'm going to try to throw a spear. <laughs> <laughs> like, at him? Oh, he's just trying to run away? Right? He's He remembered that the door is not pushed. So he's oh, I just think he was like trying to like, uh, like he's gonna... run away, run away. Sorry. Yeah, no, he's, he's trying to push through the exit door now. Okay. I thought he. I thought he was trying to say he's trying to bolt. Like he is trying to escape your presence, yeah. but he's pushing through the door. So you're gonna throw a spear at him. He's trying to run away. <laughs> yell out his friends, right? Do I get the sense he's gonna try to do that? Yeah, I mean this is a, a city. I mean it's a big place. I just, I just wanted to clarify. You're throwing a spear, like you're trying to impale him. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Roll your attack then. <laughs> you can't run. You can't. I Hello, like how you're. Friends, if he's you, dead. Don't to, you don't have to explain yourself. I'm just making sure. <laughs> 18 to hit. Yeah. It just holds the spear in the side, collapses on the ground, and he starts to pray the prayer to Imix. And, you know, he's going to. He hates you. Um, he's going to spit fire at you. Make a dexterity saving throw, Vladimir. Um, yeah, 10. Ooh, you're going for an 11. So you're going to take 2d8 fire damage. Ooh, 10. He just lashes out in this last prayer, gurgles, and then spits this fire as you end his life. He prays to Imix for retribution, and Imix grants fire from the elemental plane to punish you for taking out this soldier. You're on fire. I start drop, uh, stop, drop, and roll. I'm rolling on the floor. <laughs> and on the floor, you roll this. You see your reflection in the face of this wonderful brassy floor. You put the fire out, and the ground itself is even hot to your skin. 
you find yourself alone. The, the alarm doesn't seem to have been raised. It gets quiet here. The raccoon kind of looks around and gives you that thumbs up. All's clear. What the hell did you say to that thing, Caspian? Well, I didn't ask him how his day was going, if that's what you're wondering. Uh, he appeared to have no concept of what a key is. I'm growing concerned about this quest. And by growing, I mean I am definitely concerned. He seemed very un... He seemed... Your your interchange of language was very broken, to be fair. Yeah. So, but feel free to go forward. Um, once you use that spear twice, Vladimir, you know that it is a plus three spear. Yeah, it's well made. Not necessarily magical, but incredibly powerful and accurate. So it's a 1d6 plus three plus your strength. I think I'm going to keep this spear. It's come to handy a couple times. The raccoon also has one oh. as well. So Nice. Um, can I take a moment to uh, repair my raccoon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this room has one entrance. The door has been shut, so you know that the front door has been activated. Vladimir, you know for certain you were scryed upon. Um, you're in this atrium, and it just looks like a simple receiving room that one would use for uh, international guests before they are led into the city. And then that door is there with a dead guard outside and a dead guard in here. So as Caspian's preparing, Vladimir and Ellie, how are you resolving that situation? I'm just checking out the sphere. All right, Ellie. You see, would... yeah, he's just engrossed <laughs> with this new weapon. It's like, oh, uh, nice. I would like e to go forward and kind of peek through the door and see what I see. Wonderful. But I am trying to be very surreptitious. Ah, beautiful. You did such a good job. Crack it open ever so slightly, and you see that there is a diplomatic political party approaching pretty quickly. Uh, they seem guarded. Uh, they, they have like four guards coming with them, same spears, but it seems like a uh, undefended, like the, the, the newts are wearing robes instead of chain mail. They're wearing headdresses to represent certain council members from the city. But the door that you're looking to is a sprawling city. I mean, welcome to Fire Newt City. I mean, it is, you've been to Waterdeep before, it's not that big but it looks like a pretty powerful place for market and commerce, education. You have literally come into the front door of this area. The fact that they only had two guards doesn't necessarily mean they're in a wartime, um, but they did have some kind of scrying ability to oversee the guests that would enter. So, that is the situation. I'll kind of shut the door and I'll turn back around and be like, there's some people coming. Well, some newt people coming. The raccoon's almost ready. Just well, give me another hang, moment. They, well, hang on. They aren't necessarily the, like, stabby-stabby kind. They look mm. more like the talky-talky kind. What about the body okay. bodies? I... We should probably hide. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's oh. coming. They were dressed in robes, not armor. Um, they look a little bit on guard. Uh, we probably made a bit of a commotion. They might be just coming to say hi? Maybe we can be like, it was a really big misunderstanding! Uh, let's just talk it out. I don't mind talking things out. You can Not give necessarily it a opposed to it. Try. Um, Once that happens, we have to fight them again. Yeah, that's fine. I would like to hide while you do that, and I'll cover your back so they don't know that I'm here. It is a square room. There's no nothing to hide behind. Okay, there's never mind nothing. then. There's a there's a newt, a dead newt on the ground. <laughs> I mean, I could like puppet I, him, but I, the the prop, yeah, that you have. Yeah, no, there's no, I didn't realize there's nothing in here. Yeah, this is a square room. Okay. Um, so you, you maybe you maybe you go to like check the front door and it's definitely locked. Yeah. So, um, so hey, I've got an I've got an idea. One okay, Ellie, Ellie, the light bulb goes off her head. Which one of us, between Caspian and Vladimir, looks more like Regal? I'm blue. Dabba D. Dabba so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that took me back. Okay. So, okay. I would say, here's here's what I imagine. Vladimir looks way more Regal. Okay. Out of the so, three of you. So, what if, 
what if Vladimir, you pretend to be like a super important person who is coming to visit, and we make them think that we're supposed to be here and we're not just trying to be pirates and steal their boat. And maybe we can like bargain something we don't actually have to bargain and uh, and get them to give us the key. We could bargain the pirate ship. Oh wait, we blew it up, didn't we? Did we blow up the pirate ship? Mm, no. Oh, we could bargain off the pirate ship for hmm. the key. I could be a an ambassador. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the word, an ambassador. Of um, Neverwinter, yeah, from the city. That's totally. Wait, do you think Fire Newts like Neverwinter? One way to find out. Should, okay, and we and me and 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 Cass will be your bodyguards and. We'll, you know, stand there and look important. Make you look important. It's hard to get used to this, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> just just look pretty, Vladimir. <laughs> By the way, the language barrier. The door opens. So, how about this? <laughs> <laughs> Vladimir's still talking as they walk into the room. Go ahead. I was being primordial. It was an interpreter! Cass is your interpreter! Greetings! I'm just gonna say whatever, and then whatever I say, I'm gonna have, like, cast me and just, like, make it. They don't know what I'm gonna say. So I'm just gonna say, Back like... to attention. Important-looking, like, smug, uh, uh, stern words. Or stern, like, uh, uh, tone, I guess. As you turn around, there are indeed four council members from the Fire Newt Nation surrounded by four guards with the same black spears. They are standing at attention. They survey the room quickly, but make no means for attack. They don't make any move for attack. They look to you and one of them steps forward, uh, appearing to be some kind of scribe, a little shorter in stature. He bows and says, Welcome to Isia, Fire Newt City. Speaking to you in very polished primordial Caspian. You are coming as enemies. And he looks towards Vladimir and says, we would love to know your intentions before you progress into our town. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, well met, my friends. Um, prior to a misunderstanding at the gate, uh, I am actually here on official business of my guild, and we are hoping to work some sort of trade and perhaps open, open the doors for a new friendship. And I'm going to present them with my uh, letter uh, from my guild of uh, Baldur's Gate. Okay. Make your persuasion check. <laughs> Ellie, somehow your character is contributing to this scene. Now, I have a question. Since I'd be the one talking, but he's translating, who would be <laughs> the one doing the persuasion? <laughs> uh... Well, it depends on how you contribute to the scene. But so far, oh, Vladimir, I'll be know. talking, just talking. He'll just translate better. <laughs> you're just talking. You're just saying something like a nursery yeah, rhyme. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just okay. saying stuff. So. Okay. I'm okay. completely disregarding whatever Vladimir is saying. Yeah. yeah. I think you're. I think you're translating the way I want you to this whole time. So, Silently it, hoping he's not. <laughs> yeah, Vladimir, make your deception check then. Ellie, you're oh, contributing. Like, well, no, Caspian, you make persuasion. Okay. Vladimir, deception. And then Ellie, somehow you're contributing to this scene. I'm contributing by standing there and trying to make them look important by making me look like a security guard. Intimidation, then. Yeah, I've got, like, my short sword kind of out in my hand. And I'm just trying to look like a broody drow. I got me. Ugh. Not great. <laughs> uh, I got a... <clears throat> I got a 13. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Ellie, you better bring up the rear. Am I supposed to roll two? Uh, intimidation. Intimidation? Yeah. Okay. Roll initiative, guys. Twelve. 
Okay. All right. Let's see how this plays out. So he looks to you and he, he says back to something to a very important queenly looking figure. Um, she appears to be having like a lot more brighter colors, maybe a little more adornment and jewelry. You can assume that she's in charge. She speaks back in <laughs> draconic. If any of you know draconic, but for Everyone else, she simply says, like, they will make a fine addition to the barbecue tonight. Tie up the guards. We will have them for appetizers. And we'll have the three for dessert. Did you translate that at all, Caspian? I, I cannot. I speak primordial. These and sound Elvish. like they're threatening us. So I just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, it sounds, it sounds great. Like you're going okay. to a party. Okay. <laughs> um, they secure the guards. They tie him up and they smile to you ever so politely, uh, grinning along the way, um, motioning to you. Um, they hand you a couple gifts, uh, some robes, some vestments. They they put some lays, you know, lays them <laughs> like they like they welcome you into the city, <laughs> you know. Wow, good job, guys! You nailed it. <laughs> and then the uh, the sage looks to you, Caspian, and says. Yes, uh, we do know of this key you speak of. The Dawnwalker, please, if you would follow us. Of course. My queen is very excited. And he starts to speak in a little bit more broken common uh, to all three of you now. Um, as you're being herded, for all intents uh, and purposes, into the city. And you see um, a wonderful city, like fire new kids playing around outside. Um, they're wrestling some there's a salamander wrestling contest going on uh, where people are cheering and trying to see which one can get bucked off the fire salamander um, there are guards walking in stately formation it's a very proud city um, you also notice a couple um, shops to buy supplies and clothing uh, the fire nuke clothing of course is very lightweight as it's, it's pretty stifling and hot um, one of the shops that looks like it says like meats and more something to that effect um, and as you're handling this heat the sage looks to the three of you and says yes my queen is very interested in forming bonds and friendships in any way we can uh, wonderful to have emissaries from Neverwinter I hear you taste uh, your, your taste is uh, very exquisite um, in the finer things in life of course yes and you have a certain way about you that is pleasant to um, take hold of with the ha with the imagination not with the teeth of the hands of course of course as we were well, walking yeah. can i make like a perception check see if the denizens are checking this out like oh, oh yeah go ahead yeah, yeah. <laughs> go ahead <laughs> yeah perception check I actually feel really guilty well, about like just not walking up and saying hi yeah. and asking permission to come in. I one feel of the, like a little bad about one that. One of the, <laughs> one of the just the shop owners just kind of like chops some wood or something. Kind of looks at you, Vladimir. It's like, hey. <laughs> you know, just gives you the Please polite wave. Like really yeah. Slow. <laughs> yeah, they point, they kind of point and rib each other and like, all right, this is great. New visitors in town. Uh, meanwhile, yeah, the, the two guards are completely like hogtied and put on a spit. They're bagged up behind in a procession. Uh, it looks pretty rough for a funeral. Uh, it looks pretty like, uh, what's the word? Crude. Uh, but they're nevertheless being carried by some guards. Yes, man. Do you have any idea of the fire new people culture? Five minutes ago, you thought I was a sea elf, and now you <laughs> ask me, who is blue and clearly has an affinity for water, what I know about fire dwelling lizards. I don't know what you know. I, five minutes ago, I was, uh, ten minutes ago, I thought you were some wood elf. Fair. <laughs> I'd like to like tap the shoulder of the guy who's leading us. Uh, yes. Like Drow, yes. That's blessings what? upon you and Loth. We are very familiar with your people. Let's go with it. Let's Good. See. Let's keep it that way. You know, they'd be very upset if I didn't make it home. They might even come for me. But I was just wondering. 
What's gonna happen to these, uh, these unfortunate souls? Is there any way we can make recompense for them and honor them in their funeral? Well, funeral, yes, his white teeth glisten as he smiles to you. They have honored Emesis in the greatest way possible by protecting our city. Um, they we're, were the very, very sorry. Oh, it happens all the time. Misunderstandings, of course. Um, but it, uh, <laughs> it does happen all the time, actually. Um, but it, they serve in the best way. You know, uh, not the brightest people get sent to the front lines to guard. We value mostly the surveillance, um, which, by the way, we totally understand. You thought it was I am is Emesis himself coming to greet you, and that is a very natural reaction in the face of a god to throw the first thing you see. It's Emesis also considers that an offering of worship, so it's totally okay. I'm we'll a cleric. Fix. You know, Do I'm doing a bit of spiritual searching myself at right now. Could you tell me about your deity? Yes, I can, Vladimir. You had a question. <laughs> All right, so while she's yeah. saying about that, that god, I'm going to see if I, like, as a cleric, study that god, or, like, know about that god. Yeah, let's do a religion check, then, okay. see if that's in your back pocket. <laughs> I'm proficient in religion. So. You, it's quite possible you know. That it is a natural one! That's the second natural one! New dice, new dice! Oh. All right, so, Emesis, you remember, the god of the mermaids way below the ocean, uh, serving the Kraken, and then something about um, the end of the world. That's pretty much what you remember, but is that right? You're not too sure. Could be an Espion should know. Could be a sea elf god, for all I know. <laughs> In fact, with that one, you kind of start talking a little bit about it and make this horrible blunder, and they all just stop. And the whole city just comes to a grinding halt, and the sage just says, <laughs> Sea elf god, no! <laughs> oh, praise Emesis. You're a faithful follower. Everyone continues to resume. Um, overlooking Vladimir's faux pas. I gave Vlad Vladimir a death glare. <laughs> but you all no. enter, you're all led into a temple, and a little question the guards arises, they point to some of your weapons sage and the queen just simply say you see them mouth a couple words in their language of draconic and you are in this wonderful temple room um it is a you know 40 by 40 there's some idols of emesis a lot like the image that was portrayed on the the, the front of the, the building there are a lot more priests in here. There are fire braziers. There is a very large campfire pit in the middle with a very large, very damning spit that goes right across the top. And there's some bowls and pots and pans, and it looks a lot like a cooking ceremony. Um, not the things you would see in a church. <clears throat> they must really like potlucks in this church. I think my, my raccoon is going to go uh, and probably try to eat some of the uh, snack, grab at some of the uh, the um, food that's cooking right now. Yeah. If, you, uh, you, anything. Instantly, the raccoon finds uh, lots of onions and root herbs and clearly lack of meat, but plenty of spices, and herbs, and uh, root vegetables underground, things that have been prepared. But looks like they're all vegetarian. Man, it is so hot in here. Why do they still have more fires burning? Um, in Elvish, I think my uh, can my raccoon translate to me what it has found, since um, the Steel Defender speaks my languages. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, you're clearly aware of this now, Caspian. Um, um <clears throat> a high number winner. Everyone, roll a perception check. High number winner. Thirteen. 30 20. Oh, Dirty 20. Dirty yeah, 20. I figured Ellie would get it. <laughs> Ellie, you see in the corner of this temple, um, it is standing on like a pedestal. It's got that perfect dome, Beauty and the Beast kind of like glass case, and inside is floating a very large celestial key. Mm. Music begins to play. 
Very uh, soft and soothing should've... music. I'm a gonna lot whisk... of people gather in this room, and they're all standing file, almost as if they're ready to hear a lecture. Um, the sage kind of motions for you to be quiet. The two guards are lying in body bags at this point. One could only conclude this is the funeral ceremony. And the sage just mentions to you and says, this is the funeral. Winks at you okay. and smiles. And then kind of like just gently pokes your, your shoulder a little too long. And then kind of pulls his hand away. I'm going to smile awkwardly. And I'd actually kind of like to see if I can kind of slip away into the crowd and sneak over to that key. Use my thief skills. Let's see what happens. Oh, I'm hold on! You gotta, you gotta make it a little bit better than that. You're, in, okay. you're like, you're, you're in the center of this camp. Oh, we're in the, the center. Th- I thought yeah, we you- just walked in. Okay. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. You are. There's a little bit of distraction as the speaker, the queen, starts speaking. Uh, but this is not a room with lots of things to hide behind. Okay, so, I can't get lost in the crowd. Then. You would have to create quite a bit of. A, you would have to create minutes of attention grabbing in order for the sage or a guard not to notice you just walking over to the key. Gotcha. That being said, it depends on how you walk over to that key. And I, I want it to work, me. but I want it to work, but it's going to have to be better than just I sneak All over. All right. There. I would like to um I would like to use Ooh. this I put I got to put my battery in. Think. Okay. Good. That gives me a chance to think it out. Hey, this is Jonathan with Sojourners Awake. This is a quick break to talk about Sojourners Awake and what we have available. I am offering courses for dungeon masters to improve their tabletop role-playing experiences. Think of this as a personal trainer for your Dungeons & Dragons campaigns. So whether you are a brand new DM and you are looking to start your own campaign, or you're a longtime veteran and you're looking for ways to improve your game, A lot of times we can have Dungeon Master Burnout, and this is a great opportunity for someone to come alongside you, such as myself, and give you some pointers, tips, and ideas for inspiration, and get you back to rolling dice and telling great stories. On that other note, this is a quick break in the the game where my battery started to run low, so I stepped aside. So I decided to keep it into the recording so that you can hear what it sounds like for a bunch of players to conspire while the Dungeon Master is away. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Anyways, and so our story continues. Um, I was thinking... I got a red coin. Okay, uh, that actually is probably smarter. I was going to cast um, a globe of darkness over the queen so that hopefully everybody would panic that she suddenly disappeared and maybe rush to her aid. It's the only spell I've got left. I've used fairy fire and levitate already. There you go. <laughs> All right. I, like I don't have to do that. I, I kind of like that plan. Um, do it. I like chaos. Okay, <laughs> and, and, and uh, let me let me do you know do my thing too. I want to make sure you guys understand the scene. I've only yes. described a little bit, so Caspian, ask your questions. Uh, oh, I was just gonna tell everybody. Um, let's start speaking in Elvish. If they want to speak their language, we should speak ours. Cool. Okay. Um, okay. But what are you paying attention to in this room? Uh, what I'm paying attention to is uh, what my raccoon had just uncovered that there is no meat, no protein in the, uh, in the stew. Mm-hmm. Um, and that growing concern, uh, I'm going to pay attention to, I guess, the way they're handling the guards and the way people are like looking at us. I'm trying to kind of like piece together what is this ceremony? Are the guards the food? I don't think that Caspian would be smart enough to draw that he is, he is the food. Although he, his intelligence is pretty high, actually. Uh, yeah, my yes, you, you notice a growing concern of the fire notes. Just considering what you have just done, destroying the security system, killing two guards in cold blood, breaking into the city, they appear very welcoming of you. Uh, and they, they do, they smile to you, but when they smile, they're, they're, they're grins. It's almost like they're trying to smile like a human with something they had learned in culture, but they're just doing it wrong. So it just bears awful teeth with this wide eyed look of pleasure and excitement. One of them grabs and attempts to shake your hand like he has seen before, but when he he just gently begins squeezing up your arm and just grabs your shoulder a little bit, kind of feels around feels around the backside of your armpit and then ah. pulls away quickly and says, hey, yes, how to shake your hand, right? Yeah. Uh, welcome to I'd the like Temple to. of Emesis. 
I, I'd like to do the same, actually. I'd like to grab his hand, <laughs> kind of feel the arm, and I want to rest my hand, like, by his neck kind of area, and then uh, give him a little, little, little pat on the, I guess, his little, you know, cheek, mm-hmm. and say, yep. yes, well met, friend. Yeah, Ellie, what are you paying attention to besides that key? Uh, so I've seen the key. Uh, I want to look at where everybody is most focused uh, because I plan to cause my distraction there. I'm assuming it's the queen. Because yep. uh, my plan is to cause a distraction and then slip away towards the key. Um, however, so I'm trying to formulate how I can pull that off. So, Are you trying to gesture any of your plans to us? Or say anything in Elvish? Elvish. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to see what I see first, and then I'm going to speak accordingly. So what you see the queen doing is she's giving a very, I mean, it's a very captivating speech, but it appears to be rote. It appears to be mm-hmm. routine. Um, she gestures over a little bit to the guards. She gestures over to you once or twice, but besides politely glancing in your direction and giving a really gross smile, mm-hmm. most of the congregation turns back towards the queen. And where is the queen in relation to the key? We're going to say she's in the center and the key is on the back left side. Gotcha. Okay. So it's it's in one of the corners. So, I mean, if you can use a church's example, she is at the podium, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, She's standing at the altar. Everyone's facing her. And you're kind of like in that hello, welcome guest section. Like it's awkwardly up front. You know, it's like, you know, we don't want to be like eyes on all the time, but you're on that far right side of the church where I imagine like in, you know, there's like usually like a like a drop box in the back of the church right some kind of relic in that back area next to the bathrooms and that's where the key is okay so it is in the back but there might be an usher to a guard that might notice you but for the most part everyone is eyes up front so, with the exception of her she's looking towards so the back yeah, so. making this decision i'm like i've got an idea i'm going to speak in elvish under my breath it's like i've got an idea but it might cause a scene Vladimir, you're drawing in, using your senses to draw in information at this time. What do you notice? I'm going to uh, try to figure out a, I guess not a plan, but a, a worst case scenario. How many people are around us? Yeah. <laughs> that's, what I was, that's what I was yeah. thinking. <laughs> this is the worst case scenario. God, this is the part of maps to hate. So I think solid 20 commoners okay Okay. everyone got that i'm gonna say there are i told you there are four guards and there are four priests um including the queen right so i imagine four guards that look just like the same level caliber of people that you took down before Um, there are 20 commoners you know women children i mean just varying ages and sizes of fire newts not appearing to be of military strength and then the queen and then the three priests those three priests seem to also have the ability to breathe that fire um, as they sing out a little bit some of the fire breath and then their locations i mean the commoners are all kind of closer together the ushers the guards are on four corners of the room uh the priests are all up front the priests are all up front kind of where you're at so yeah right okay and how many doors are there there's <laughs> you know, there's always one door leading out, like some like foyer and towards the back, of course, where you came from, but that goes right back into the city. Okay. You know what, Vladimir? Um, yeah, actually, yeah, roll a perception check. You better roll high. You I've been awful, rolling so low. Awful player. I do not know. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. I believe in you. I believe nine. in the heart of the dice. You got a nine. nine. I don't believe in you anymore. <laughs> Change your dice. I'm not sure about right, this so... Merlin guy. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled from like a like a 17 to a five to plus four. So this this is the dirty trick, but it proves how like dense Vladimir is because that's fun to see too. But you do notice that there is a small door that's been kind of barred shut. It looks like a a basement crawl space on one on your side. You know your side of the church room um at first you didn't notice it and then you kept looking back at it it seems like Coraline's trying to like guide you in this direction 
It looks like a basement crawl space. You have no idea where it goes. It doesn't make sense for a building infrastructure. But besides the back exit and then, of course, the office space where the priests kind of go, um, kind of like behind the altar, there's like a little... They keep going through a door back and forth there. So there's really three door exits possible. So you have your options. You have your options of the unknown priest room in the back. Back the way you came to the city and then this weird basement crawl space. That we, indeed seems like your best option. Do we want to sneak away and come back when it's less crowded? We sneak away. They're going to certainly notice that the only three new, non newts are here, but. <laughs> sure. Well, there's always places to hide in a city. Let's do it. I could also cause a bit of commotion and we can just make a run for the key and then a run to escape. No like time like the present. I like that plan. All right, so Ellie, you're going to create your distraction. It's clear that everyone's in, you know, alignment with this plan. Is everyone as Vlad okay with it? I just want to make sure oh, because because yeah. you're making a face. Nope, nope, go for it. I'm, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's TPK, everyone. Okay, uh, so I'm just going to um, call on my innate powers of darkness, and I'm going to drop a globe of darkness right on top of the queen. So that she can't see out and her people can no longer see her. I like that. Yeah, it gets tense. I hope it incites <laughs> panic. <laughs> I mean, people are looking around. Uh, it, I mean, this especially consider how bright this place is. The amount of fire and light and heat. Um, suddenly, just this globe of inky darkness. Um, the guards begin to grab their spears and... They don't quite head towards the darkness, but they maintain alert as if someone turned the lights out and they're just looking around and they look back at the globe. Oh, one of the priests just dives right in. One of the priests just breathes fire on the globe, trying to illuminate it. You can watch the, the, the fire just get sucked into this black, inky blob. Did Nothing he burn happening. his queen? Perfect. They appear to be pretty resistant okay. to fire. Okay, I'm I mean, making yeah. sure. Yeah, I mean, you, you, but there's like fire everywhere. But, but yes, nobody is moving or panicking. I mean, everyone's kind of like in that, it's that state of like, no one's really moving, but everyone's heightened, very sensitive right now to what's going on. Um, people are maybe making a little bit to like duck and cover. Okay. Um, the priests are all focused on that blob. The, the two usher guards from the back move towards the front. So, do I see an opportunity for me to slip towards the key, or do I see that I don't have that opportunity? Because that's yeah. going to change how I react. I think you can. I think that'll lower, okay. lower the DC a little bit. Okay. Um, tell you what, we're going to make this um, high risk, high reward. It's a lot to ask for, but I think if you get it, um, we're going to make the DC 17. Okay. All right. So. Or stealth? Yeah, it's going to be stealth. All right. Well, I'd like to try to move into the shadows this, and around. I was gonna. I would bless her, or or not bless her. Uh, uh guidance her before all of this. You could. Yeah, you have that time. You do guidance. Great. Uh, I'm just gonna say, just make sure they stay busy, and I'm gonna try to slip away. And I got a natural twenty. <laughs> well done. Plus eight for my stealth. <laughs> Plus the guidance. I Plus mean. the guidance that I didn't even roll. <laughs> I might oh, save that right. guidance for later. <laughs> well, I did say high risk, high reward. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you risked it all. Your reward is going to be great. You easily get back. You even, like, bumped into one of the guards. He just pushes past you. Uh, you catch your breath. You go towards that key. And as you lift it up, and as soon as you touch it, it just says, Dawn Walker. Pocket it very quickly. Uh, you see that all the attention is being put on this globe of darkness. All right, I'm gonna so, like look at my companions and gesture them to that door that Vladimir pointed out, and I'm gonna try to hurry back to them as quick as I can. The crawl space? Yeah, I think that's okay. what we decided was yeah, the best sure. exit, right? All right, Caspian, you've been kind of quiet during this time, so what have you been doing? Um, I'm trying to get my raccoon back <laughs> towards me. Oh yeah. You know, just going. He's, he's pocketed some onions and some sweet potatoes. Nice. <laughs> Got him in this bag. Nice. I brought this for you, boss. 
<laughs> Figure you some lose some sustenance. You're starting to look a little bony. I don't like the way that <laughs> lizard dude is feeling you up. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna grab him and kind of get ready to sneak right. on out of here if we have to. It's pretty hectic and chaotic. I mean, every people are starting to stand up, and there's lots of movement going on. So you feel that comfortability of like just quickly shifting because, of course. People are assuming you're getting out of danger. That darkness, how long does it last? Minute, I think, but I'll double check. I'm pretty sure it's just a minute. Um, uh. She is going to step out of the darkness. Oh, yeah. And as soon as she does, everyone kind of gasps and she looks around Ooh, and says... Oh, ten minutes. Ten minutes? Okay, yeah. so there's a priest around there just like fumbling and psh, the fire goes straight through. She steps out and she snaps her fingers and you know what she says... And, uh, primordial. The drow have returned. We are under attack. That's what I was going to threaten her with if no one was distracted, so I'm fine with this. <laughs> Alright. Um, we're going to keep that initiative level. They're beginning to assume a military operation. You hear the alarm go off. very used to having drow come by they know exactly what this routine means you see children begin to get behind their parents you see parents pull out small little weapons you see everybody brace for okay now we know what's going on we we understand this vladimir you go to reach that door and it's kind of like uh you you see vladimir try to reach for that crawl space and there's a pretty nice block it uh boarded barricade over it just curious to know how you're going to get through this. It's not giving easily. How are you going to bust through it? Oh, I got a... Vladimir? Well, I just... Yeah, I wonder, like, you go to pull open this basement crawl space door, <laughs> yeah, and it's not it's not giving, and you can hear the the tension being drawn towards you now. It, I, like, I know what I must do. <laughs> <laughs> da -na 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 -da. I, 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 like... I, like, uh... Take a little, like, a, a second just to, like, line up my maul before uh, taking it back and swinging it. All right. Make your, uh, make it attack. Yeah, just attack roll. Fifteen. Oh, yeah. Okay, easy enough. It's okay. Smashes straight through and it just shatters into wooden bits. And this is the, you'd notice this is, like, the first time you've seen wood in this, this area. Usually it's brass and stone and volcanic rock. And it burps forth this very powerful odor deep into the underdark. But you can smell water and mold, and mildew, things that are not becoming of a fire newt city. Uh, it's very uh, maybe pleasant to you, Caspian. You smell that watery, just familiar, comforting, salty smell. I'm gonna dive like right into it. Like <laughs> I have had it with the fire. I'm don't like this heat i'm just charging right in i'm gonna okay. like nose dive you know all right we'll see what your what your skill check's gonna be um vladimir you're standing over motioning everyone to get in yeah okay ellie including the, i'm uh, gonna dash try to like do one of those like baseball slides in because i don't want to go head first okay vladimir oh uh, yeah i go feet first i don't know what I, I don't know what's behind. I don't know how deep that water is. <laughs> yeah. They are on to you, so the three of you make a dexterity save. Nine. Fail. This is my third third one tonight. Oof. Nat <laughs> natural one? Yeah. I got wow. a 13. All three of those are fails. You all take 16 fire damage. <laughs> oh, my oh, no. God. Oh, no. Don't forget your five temporary hit points. Oh, I, I didn't. <laughs> feeling, feeling really bad. I'm really bad right now. Does my uh, does the raccoon take 16? Fire, then doused in water. Yeah, the, the, you're sliding down this tunnel. You become very aware that you were in this slip and slide. This, strangely enough, at the bottom of the earth, you're just moving back and forth and up and down in the slick wetness of this this rock 
bumping up against your back and hammering you to the side, um, completely dousing out any fire, but of course you still feel those singed burns. Um, you're just moving at a rapid speed, and you, you can kind of safely assume that given this sickly, wet, moldy environment, no fire newt is chasing you. Outside you hear the alarm br- a blare and they begin to do like a search party to see where the drow have infiltrated. Not quite sure who it was, but they know that somewhere the drow are here. Ellie, you may have not passed for a drow as much as you expected. Okay. You find yourself underwater. Splash. And somehow you've come at the bowels of the earth. And (laughs) you're in inky darkness, but you feel water moving all around you. Caspian, I assume this is completely... Wonderful. <laughs> this couldn't have gone better. Home sweet home, eh, boss? This is feeling pretty good. <laughs> I start sinking in my, like, my uh, chain mail. <laughs> and at the end of all things, will the sojourners arrive safely? So, it's been a while since I've done drown checks. Um, everyone needs to make an athletics check. Uh, as you instinctively swim towards the surface, Caspian, this is your this is your mojo. So, I think you're doing all right. So, um, sixteen, twelve. Okay, Ellie's falling behind. Vladimir, um, you take off your armor. Can I? I can. Can you? I don't know if you can. No, I think I can. You can't. Are you instant. No, no. Instant well, fail then. Yeah, you can't. Okay. I Am mean, I, yeah, how does that work? It's like donning off all water. I don't, I don't think I you could. could you could snap off that breastplate instantly. Okay. I mean, anything you should. that or sink, so I'll take it off. Okay. Your armor just floats down to the ground to Davy Jones' locker. <laughs> In the distance, you see a very large angler fish. We're talking like twice the size of a Volkswagen bus. It's large. <laughs> bulbous fishing rod and just swaying back and forth tempting any creature to come towards the light. You see a school of fish just swim around in like this underwater tornado. Caspian, you're pushing forward and you see Elia's falling behind. I'm going to reach out and try to kind of, for once, boost her out of uh, danger. (laughs) (laughs) Much obliged. (laughs) You do. The three of you make your athletics checks again. Ellie may do so. Um, using Caspian's advantage. So I have a 17 plus 1, 18. Okay. So that's your. I rolled advantage? Well, that's your advantage, is the 18. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. that didn't go well. <laughs> Vladimir, uh, you can roll again. Athletics? 8. 8. <laughs> Vladimir, you're. My ball, raccoon you're, gonna help Vlad- him? Well, your maul is getting really heavy. You're, you, you begin to swim, and that maul is just dragging against the water, and it's causing you to sw- it start swimming in a circle. <laughs> no. How do you progress? I twist the uh, the head um, that's like usually dangled down towards my feet, and kind of like maneuver around so it's on my head. Okay. So it's, so, it's a, so it's above the water. Okay. Maybe that would. Uh, uh, maneuver the uh, just... yeah. I think that I think that makes sense. It's a lot better than what I was going to suggest. You start to swim back forth. You see this beautiful sparkling light cresting the top of the water, knowing the bubbles begin to float from your mouth upwards fashion. You press on, cast in. You know that you and your companions are moving safer and safer towards the water. But it's been a long time, and you feel that pressure in your lungs begin to burn. So each of you make your constitution saving throws. Caspian. Can I breathe underwater? Yeah, you don't have to, Caspian. You're fine. But then a druid shark attacks you from... <laughs> not, not again! Um, I'm back for more! 23. Ooh, Ellie. It burns your chest, but you press on and you have Caspian alongside you. Go ahead, Vladimir. Vladimir's body goes... Five. Vladimir... You just start to, um, you are, yeah, you're unconscious. Vladimir just begins to float. Do any of us notice this? 
Yeah. Yeah, you see it down. I want to hit Caspian and, like, point back. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take that and uh, kind of, like, let go of uh, Ellie and just dive that bomb is- towards uh, Vladimir. Caspian. Yeah, that is the... That is the- the, the 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 ace of spades is it not the water ganassi yeah. revealing his true heritage in a sea campaign you're able to save vladimir and stories have been written about this sailors saved by merfolk sea elves and even water ganassi and indeed vladimir you have your story as um you're not I'm pulled this you're you're pulled your head bobs above the surface of the water your lungs vomit up the sea water and you Look over and you see Caspian's face. Oh. I'm actually I'm rocking my hair out too at the same time. I want to be just in all the majestic glory. <laughs> I kind of reach out and I go, Corlin. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie Vladimir is brought back from the brink of death due to Caspian's quick thinking. And the raccoon just points with his hand, and you just see this very large, beautiful ship. At the just sitting there floating in the water, and you see on the edge of the shore an Aram pointing Captain Festerwound arriving with his crew. Except Ellie has the key. Yep. <laughs> and as it was said before, the one who holds the key holds the ship. They seem panicked and frustrated, and Captain Festerwind begins cursing and stomping his feet. Aram ducking, the ducking as Captain Festerwind tries to smack him over the side of the head. The three of you are able to board the Dawn Walker, and as you step forward, Ellie, um, your each boot step leaves behind a trail of salt water, and then begins to ripple in light as the Dawn Walker begins to wake up. And unlike gliding upon underneath the water as the story began, where you all three were, the Dawnwalker gently lifts inches above the water and skates like a hovercraft. Guided by the celestial energy, instinctively moving in the direction that you command it. You begin to feel this, this intellect connect with you as if the Dawnwalker has this knowledge herself it greets you in your mind hello I am Dawnwalker are you the captain absolutely where shall we go captain so I have a moral dilemma where to and I'll put my arms out on the uh, but what about Aram captain ask for our help are we Aram, just gonna leave him? Aram, who led Captain Fester to your Oh, location. he did lead him to us. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I thought that he was taken hostage. Oh. My moral dilemma is over. Let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> the raccoon gets up in the the uh, the crow's nest, puts an eye patch over his head, says, "To where the wind may take us, right, Captain?" Absolutely. Just. Anywhere but here. Where were we trying to go in the beginning? Where were we initially trying to sail to before the pirates got us? Uh, I think you're going to Neverwinter. <laughs> oh, back to Neverwinter. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> adventure on the high seas? I don't know. Treasure Island? <laughs> it begins I like to adventure f- on the high seas. Yeah, I love pirates the hunts. It begins to float. You're skating alongside the edge of the ocean. Over it, you see this wonderful puffy white clouds. The sun beaming high in the noonday sky. The Dawnwalker finally taking flight after hundreds of years. Its key being reunited with its it's ship. Air. The ship. Yes, it is. Welcome to Spelljam. And so for now, our story concludes.
we are not selling this ship. It is mine forever. 